In this video, we're going to discuss Newton's third law. Newton's third law is often described with the following statement. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. This is an interesting statement, but it's looking at two objects exerting forces on each other. And what it means is, if object one exerts a force on object two, object two is going to exert an equal and opposite force on object one. We often express this with the following equation, where the force exerted by object one on object two is equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, to the force exerted by object two on object one. Now, questions on the MCAT about Newton's third law is often asking, what are the two forces involved? Now, there are many situations where you have forces that seem to be following Newton's third law, but actually are not. So to help you with this, I've included here three requirements for you to figure out if the two forces are those in Newton's third law or not. So requirement number one, the forces have to be the same type of force, which means it can't be the gravitational force with the electrostatic force. That doesn't work. Number two, the forces have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So that means if one force is 20 newtons to the right, then the other force has to be 20 newtons to the left. Equal in magnitude, opposite in direction. Third requirement, the forces have to act on different objects. So this means you cannot be looking at forces acting on the same object. And if you have forces that fulfill these three requirements, then they form what we call an action-reaction pair. All right, so now that we've defined Newton's third law and how to identify forces that form an action-reaction pair, let's take a look at an example. So here we have a situation where a box on a table experiences a normal force and a gravitational force. These forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, and the question is, do they form an action-reaction pair? So, as usual, in physics situations, it's often good to draw out the situation that we have here. So, we have a table, and we have a mass sitting on top of this table. We're told that there is a normal force, and we're also told that there is a force of gravity. And we want to know, do these form an action-reaction pair? The answer is no. The reason why they do not form an action-reaction pair is because if we look at our requirements, requirement number one, they have to be the same type of force. Here, we have a normal force. We have a gravitational force. That is not an action-reaction pair, right? They're different forces. Number three, they have to act on different objects. Both of these forces act on the box. That does not work. So, while it's true that these forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, that's not the only requirement for these forces to be an action-reaction pair. You must fulfill all three requirements. So, if these forces aren't an action-reaction pair, then a question you might wonder is, what are the action-reaction pairs? So, there are two pairs here, so we can look at Action-reaction pair one and we can just take a look at one of these forces. So the first force we might want to look at is the force of gravity. To figure out what the forces are in an action-reaction pair, you have to figure out two things. What is the type of force and what are the two objects acting on each other? So in this case, the force of gravity being exerted on the mass is from Earth, right? So this is the force of gravity of the Earth on the box. So that means the pair, the other force, must also be the force of gravity, and it must be from the box on the Earth. So this is one action-reaction pair. The weight of the Earth 
or the force of gravity of the Earth on the box and the force of gravity of the box on the Earth. Let's take a look at our other action-reaction pair. So we can say this is going to be action-reaction pair number two. And now we can consider the normal force. The normal force is also acting in the box, and in this case it's being exerted by the table. So you can say that you have the normal force of the table that is acting on your box. So therefore the pair that is with this action-reaction pair also has to be the normal force and it has to be the opposite direction. The box exerting its normal force on the table. All right. So those are a couple examples of action-reaction pairs that follow Newton's third law. And just to summarize, there are three requirements for these action-reaction pairs. They have to be the same type of force. They have to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And they have to act on different objects.